Hello, and welcome to the shed. In today's video, I'm going to be reflattening my workbench. Hope you enjoy. So, this is a process that I've already done once before since I made this bench, and it's a process that I always end up putting off because I don't like having to reflatten it because if something goes wrong you could theoretically stuff up your workbench but uh, it really it's not really that much of an issue you just gotta follow your normal flattening processes that you do for for rough timber and there's really no problem what I'm gonna be using today is my number seven hand plane for this process probably followed up by a number four just to smooth the surface out so what I've done is I've cleared everything out around me I've got casters on this workbench so I'm gonna to have to actually roll it out from the edge a little bit so I can do this so let me get this workbench out and we'll get started so before you get started you want to make sure you've got any brass dogs anything like that on your workbench out of the way first of all we probably want to work out exactly how flat the workbench is one way to do that is with the side of your plane like this now I'll get you a close up of this in a sec but in my case here I have a high spot over here and on here so the two outside edges and what it's done is it's dropped here now I suspect that's because I have legs out on the far side and no stretches between them on this particular workbench and so gravity has been allowed to act on the center of this workbench even though it's a large laminated top, over time gravity still has its action and that's just part of what happens when you use pine for a workbench. I like the use of pine because it's cheaper and it is lighter, but maybe you have to flatten it a little bit more often, which is not so great. So let me get you down here. I'll put some light behind here so you can see exactly what we're dealing with here along the length of this workbench. So, you can see in the middle here how we've got light coming in under the edge of it. And so, right out here there's no light on that outside edge just here. Back here, no light right on the very edge, which means we've got light through here now. Uh, that is pretty much the whole length of the bench, if you can see. I come right up to this end, and even when I come closer to you, it's the same. What we're obviously going to have to do here Let's flatten that so because it's dipped in the middle I'm gonna start on the two outside edges rather than coming straight across as you might sometimes do to flatten because I know that I've got some high spots on the outside edges I'm gonna take a couple of runs down each side and then double check I'm gonna keep double checking this to see where it's out of flat so if I can just bring the two outside edges down I might be able to flatten it and that's all I'm gonna to need to do this time if I have to do a little bit more we might have to do a little bit more but to start with that's where I'm gonna start so because I'm right-handed this makes it a little difficult so I'm actually going to be using my offhand to come through here I'm just gonna have to knock that across a bit so I can get the hand plane in here so if you have a look here I moved a little bit here and then right along here I didn't hit and then I hit here which means I've got some low spots coming this way so I've got to keep going until I get a nice even shaving right along this edge because I talked about the cupping going across the width but in the length there could also be a little bit because it spans between two legs again gravity so that's what I'm going to keep doing here I'm going to keep going until I get a nice clean shaving right the way along here and you can actually hear that in the sound So you can hear it taking shavings here, back here, it skips, then takes the shave. Now what you'll see me doing here, because I'm right handed and I'm working on this side and I'm, I don't like using the hand plane left handed, what I'm doing is holding it this way and actually pulling it. And that's another way that you can actually use these. You can use them like a Japanese plane and pull them towards you. So I've come all the way through here. Now what I need to do is actually sharpen this blade.
made it the top up, I didn't have the grain going in the same direction, and so I'm having reversing grain come into my cut as I'm working here, which is not a problem with the jointer plane so much, but when I come in with the smoother plane, I'll have to be careful. And the new Lubin one that I've got is going to be good for that because it seems to have very little tear out when in use. The middle spot here is actually the lowest spot on my bench, which means I need to keep working these outside edges. So one way I can come across like this, and I'll show you how, how that works to flatten across like this. So to do that, we want to obviously run a chamfer down this side. So we don't blow that edge out. And this can be a fairly heavy chamfer along here because having a rolled edge on your bench top is not a bad thing in the first place. So just like when you flatten a rough piece of timber, traversing across the grain is the easiest way to remove the material and flatten it the fastest because you can actually remove a little more material that way. Now normally you'd do that with a scrub plane. In this case, I'm still using my number seven. I might drop back to a number five for going across just because I don't need as wide a reference. But using the number seven is not a bad thing because I have full reference that you see across here. And because I'm trying to get this flat, I don't want to have to do a whole bunch of extra flattening after as if it was a rough top to start with. And so it, while it might take a little longer to get my referencing, it's going to be quicker and faster to actually do it this way. And it's going to get better results than using a narrower uh, sold uh, plane. So if we were to use a number four here, you can see that it's really going to follow any of these, whereas this one's going to skip the high points and take the high points down until we're relatively flat. Now number five is going to have a similar effect here. The sole is a little bit shorter, but it's still going to have pretty good referencing for coming across here, so you could definitely do that. So you can see here at the moment, a little bit of a mosaic as we remove the finish that's on here, but that also gives you a good indication of where you remove material and where you still need to. And so you can see this low spot here, so I need to remove more material off these two high spots once again until we get it down here. Just as important this time as it is any other time when you're hand planing to concentrate on making sure that you don't dip off at this end or dip off at that end. Now with a long plane like this it's easy to not dip off this end, you just put pressure down here or it kind of keeps itself there. But when you start it's very important to get as much of this part of the plane on here, hold it down and then push on so you're not taking more off this edge than the other edge. If we have a good look over here, we can see that I'm starting to take some shavings in the middle here, which means that some of these spots are a little bit lower than others. But you can see through the middle here, I'm starting to get connection there, which means that it's probably a little bit wavy, which is probably to be expected considering this is laminated together and I didn't really pay any attention to grain direction. What I'm going to do is switch to my number five now, because you can see here I've got referencing to flat sort of into the middle here. Any of the gaps that are down lower is actually smaller than the length of my plane. And I just wanted to show you, you could do this whole bench with a number five. And so I thought I'd switch to it. The advantage I have with the number five is that this plane has a slightly wider mouth, which means I can take a slightly thicker shaving. And because I've got the narrower blade, I'm gonna be able to get through it a little bit quicker. Because I made mistakes when I originally made this bench and uh, <laughs> have a lot of against the grain instead of everything going in the same direction, I'm always going to tear out using even the number four I find. Uh, since this is pine, it's very prone to tearing out and so the only other option is some sort of a scraper plane or hand scraper. 
This is a number 12 and a half scraper plane with a rosewood sole and I'm probably going to do a little bit of work with this on the surface to help smooth it out. Now it's not 100% important that the workbench is dead smooth because really it doesn't matter. But I like to get it to a degree of smoothness. A little bit of roughness on your workbench is never a bad thing because it does stop work pieces from sliding around so much and so that can actually be beneficial. So what we're going to do is I'm going to run with the smoothing plane another couple of times and then probably come in with the scraper or I'm going to come in with my bedrock and see how well that can go even against the grain and then we'll look at the scraper plane. So uh, sit back and enjoy this and uh, when I get back to you we'll be putting a finish on this table. I thought we'd go ahead and we'll put a finish on it. I'm just going to use straight linseed oil here. That's my go-to finish, especially for a workbench. You could use paste wax, but as I said, I prefer a little more roughness to my workbenches so stuff doesn't slide around particularly easily. So since you saw me last, when I was applying that first coat of linseed oil to the bench, I went ahead off camera and applied another two coats and I've left it overnight to dry. So now all, I'm gonna, now all that really has to happen is maybe a quick wipe over, but from what I can tell, it's actually dry right over and it's absorbed the oil. So I don't think there's actually much more that needs to be done from here on out. So the main reason I decided to leave this section here is it was a mistake that I made when I initially made the table and I was aware that just through here this one was a lot lower. So what happened is I made the mistake of gluing this entire top up all at the same time. And so along with that I missed the fact that this one had actually dropped lower. And so it sat quite a bit lower than the rest of it when I initially flattened it and just here this piece is still sitting and I can feel it with my finger as I come through. It's like two or three mil lower down just through this section here. And so short of redoing it, I just decided to leave it. So I thought I'd share that with you just as, you know, a word of caution. If you are making your own slab top table like this or workbench, glue them up into smaller sections. It's going to be easier for you to work with and prevent mistakes like I've done just here. And so I thought you guys would be interested in hearing one of my mistakes. We're all human after all and we all make mistakes and I like to share my mistakes with you and that was a mistake I made when I made this particular workbench and I don't want you to repeat the same mistakes that I do. So if you are making about a 600mm wide workbench like this, uh, glue them up in two smaller sections and then bring them together and that's going to give you much better results. So. I hope you enjoyed this video on me reflattening my workbench and I hope that it's a task that you guys um, are now more confident to do yourself. I know that I never really enjoy doing this and I know this took a little bit longer than I was intending but for the main reason that I didn't want to take too much off my workbench I was trying to maintain the thickness but just reflatten it and it also took a little bit longer because I had a few issues with my hand plane like my number seven jointer the frog came loose and moved back and so I had a few issues taking shavings there and throughout the time it would have been sped up a little bit if I had uh, probably used a scrub plane but because I didn't want to remove too much I didn't do that and so I didn't want to be too aggressive with my planing and if I had been a little quicker to sharpen my hand plane blades this also would have taken um, a shorter period of time I believe because 
doing this work, even on this being pine, was blunting those blades extremely fast, which was uh, rather interesting. And I hope you enjoyed the addition of the scraper plane in there. I will do another dedicated video on actually turning the curl on that and stuff because it's still not perfectly set up so I've got to do a little more troubleshooting before I do that but if you guys would like a video on that scraper plane please let me know because I think that would be a good video to include for you guys if, if you're looking at some sort of a scraper plane. So if you like this video please consider liking and subscribing down below. While you're down there please sound off in the comments. Let me know if you would have done something different for flattening this workbench because Obviously, we only learn by talking with each other, and so if any of you have any other ideas out there of how you would have worked on something like this, I'm eager to hear them in the comments below. So, if you'd like to see another great video such as this, please check out the one up here that YouTube believes is best suited for you to watch next. I'm also going to leave the Intermediate Woodworking playlist up here as well, which this video is going to be part of. Bye for now.